Hi folks, John here, GMIT Label. Some months ago, probably about four or five, six months ago, whatever it was, I made a, uh, a video, which uh, actually a lot of you have, have uh, viewed, uh, showing you how to use a, um, uh, the Zebra D Designer Pro software to format a label. And then from that video, we downloaded it to a ZT230 and printed the labels and so forth. And I actually went into a lot of detail on how to use that. I ended the video by saying that I would publish another video uh, linking the Design Pro software label to a database so you can use a database. And unfortunately, it just took me, it took me longer than I thought to get back to doing that. Uh, keep in mind, <clears throat> I do these, uh, I, I do these for, for no cost to anybody. It's just a matter of uh, uh, time and so forth. So I apologize, but that's what I'm going to cover today and um, and hopefully give you a reasonable explanation. Now one thing I should say about databases, these software packages like the Design Pro, CodeSoft, uh, Bartender and so forth, they can be linked to many different databases. The most common is Excel. So for that purpose I'm going to be using an Excel spreadsheet and I'm going to link it. It's going to be a DB file. Link it to a label and I'll show you how to do it. Now what you, what you uh, and, and basically we're going to attempt to accomplish five things here today. One we're going to, and this is the first thing you need to do, is we're going to set up a database uh, in Excel uh, that we're going to use. And two, we're going to set up a, a uh, label. Um, <clears throat> and when I say set up a label, it's going to be predetermined size, but also on that label, we're going to put information on it that, that will probably never change. As an example, you may have customer name on or something like that, PO number, um, you know, just, just kind of like titles, and then we're going to use the fields to uh, fill the information underneath or beside the uh, titles and so forth. And then once we get the uh, label set up, uh, we're going to go ahead and we, now we, we're going to set up the database, then the label, then we're going to go ahead and I'll show you how to establish the link um, to the database uh, or link the database to the label itself. And then once we uh, link the database to the label, we're going to go ahead and set up the fields uh, on the label that we're going to be sucking information out of the database to and then finally five we're going to go ahead and print a label. Now to accomplish that I'm actually starting from the back and then I'll go back to the uh, beginning, the end result. The end result is basically what you see on the screen before you. Um, you'll see certain fields uh, like Premier Sock Company which means nothing, I just made up names. Uh, in big city North Carolina and so forth. These are types of fields that, that uh, may never change. In other words, the from, it'll always come from maybe you in this case. And then the to uh, is a field that'll never change, but maybe the, what customer it's going to, their address, their city, state, zip, that kind, that would change. So those fields where you see the question marks and the uh, little yellow blocks in there saying sheet one with a dollar sign, customer name, those are the different fields that are in fact they're picking information out of the database that I've already pre-established. Uh, so that's what your ultimate label is going to look like and I'm showing you this first so that uh, uh, when you do do your your link and you have your fields uh, you won't actually see the information on the screen that you're going to print but if you print the label you'll actually see the information. And I'm going to attempt to print one here just to show you uh, real quick. I'm hoping all of you can see this is, uh, oops, I got to select the record first. I'm going to say this one here, and I'm going to say print me one, that's right over here. And I'm going to say okay, and I'm hoping you folks are able to see all that, because um, uh, once again, I don't want to mess around with the, uh, <clears throat> I don't want to mess around too much with the camera, because ultimately when you make these videos, you spend more time moving cameras around, zooming in and out and you start to lose trend of thought and the important points that have to be made. But as you can see, the label that you see on the screen has the fields, but what you actually print is quite different. It actually sucks out all the information and fills in the information that you need and so forth. So that's the end result. That's what we're looking for. So with that said, uh, let's, let's do uh, a couple things. One, let's establish the database. I'm going to click on Excel, and all I'm using the Excel, it's under XP simply because I'm working with a 14-year-old uh, uh, laptop, and uh, 
I never use it, so but I'm just going to get and use it anyways here in this case. Now what I did is I preloaded information just to, in order to save time. I'm not a, uh, a typer per se. In fact, um, uh, people around here call me a hunting pecker, you know, that kind of stuff. So <laughs> maybe I shouldn't use that term. But anyways, I just kind of like uh, peck away at uh, what I need to put into it. So I left a few fields that I'll actually uh, fill in here. Uh, in this here one, we're going to do the case count. Uh, four, three, two, one. I'm going to go up here via first one I'm going to put in there will be uh, let's say UPS next one let's say FedEx next one let's say roadway next one let's say yellow for yellow freight now I just did that to show you that uh, this would be the the actual uh, database that I'm uh, I'm, I'm building um, in Excel and so forth and I'm going to do a file save just so I have this uh, saved. I already got a predetermined name. It's important that you remember where you have the database so you can go back when you link it. Uh, you're going to actually have to be able to point to it. So uh, pick a name for it that's appropriate uh, and get do a save and remember where you saved it to and so forth, uh, which is kind of uh, kind of neat. So there's the database. All this once again was preloaded. I preloaded it all. I try to keep the uh, individual cells separately so when you print the label you can actually see it. Now keep in mind when you build your database, this is your um, your actually header uh, your your headers that you're going to be working from, uh, and these are all the different fields that I'll look on, you know, and so forth. Um, and you can make this as large as you want and pick the individual fields that, that you need. Um, and you may have something else that's actually changing all these different fields. You know, as an example, let's take ABC Company over here, and I'm hoping you're able to see that. Let me zoom in a little bit. I hate to mess around with cameras. That's not my uh, that's not my business here, cameras. But uh, I understand there's a reason. But uh, anyways, you may have ABC Company up here, and as an example, maybe this address will never change. Probably won't, but the PO might change. The uh, style, the color, and the size may change, and you may in fact change that. So if you had, a, as an example, 200 records within your database, let's say for instance 200 customers <clears throat> in this case, and you're going to be printing uh, maybe a, a number of labels off of 50 customers, let's say 40 labels off of 50 customers. Well, it's easier just to go in here and change everything you have to and then go back, pull up the label and do the print uh, rather than trying to change the individual label itself uh, per customer. So uh, that's what's really key. And that, but more importantly, if you have something that's feeding these fields automatically, then in fact you're not even messing with that. You're, you're actually uh, changing the information from some other uh, computer, some server somewhere, uh, whatever might be doing it. And then you might have an operator in shipping department that's just pulling up the label and downloading and printing away and so forth. But that's the link of the database. Um, keep in mind now for you, those of you with bigger companies, they don't even need you don't even need to go through something like this. You can actually you you probably have an IT department that can set up a print file on its own and link it and send download that uh, in a ZPL format to a uh, any Zebra printer and so forth. So. Uh, we're working with Excel. This is more for the smaller companies that have a lot of customers, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's important that I stress that because I do have a lot of customers that actually have IT departments and they build their own, uh, their own databases, their own uh, uh, print formats in Notepad and then they uh, link it to a Zebra printer and so forth. So, uh, but anyway, so now we've got this built. Let's go over and uh, get, pick ourselves out a label. And once again, this was the one I showed you, but we're going to go ahead and switch over. Here's a label here that we haven't done anything. Now, I went ahead, once again, in the interest of time, I put in the information I already wanted in there. And what i got to do now to begin with is, as I mentioned, the second step, once you have your database established, you want to go ahead and establish a link to this particular label that you set up. So we did the database. We got our label, we have a 4x6 size that we picked, it can be a 3x2, 4x2, 4x1, 4x6, 3x5, whatever you would choose. 
Uh, we got the hard information that never changes, already preloaded, as you can see. Uh, all we want to do now is link it, and then we're going to build our field. So first thing is here, is you come over here, and you'll see where it says create a database connection. I'm, I'm hoping you can see that. In fact, I'm going to move up here just to make certain that uh, everybody sees what I'm talking about here. I'm going to zoom in. Up here in Excel, hopefully you can see that. As I come across, it says database. And then it says create a database connection, which is what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to move back down the screen here so you can actually see what I'm seeing. I'll zoom out a little bit. So this will pop up immediately. And there's a number of things you're going to do here, and this is kind of key, because linking this database is, the, uh, is really the, the most important step here. It says direct database access, and that's what we're going to do. And then you'll see where you have other databases and so forth. Um, <clears throat> this is for people that are a little bit more familiar with databases. First thing is you see the empty block right here, we're going to do a browse. Now in my case, I have it loaded into, um, I have it under the Zebra uh, Design Pro uh, program. They have database uh, in there. I'm going to take that. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to link it to the 4x6 label. And then I'm, I, I highlighted it and I'm going to click open. So that's been open. As you can see, this has been changed. It's saying sheet one. So really it's going to look on sheet one for everything. Uh, now I'm going to hit next. Now as you can see, everything that's in there has been highlighted. So basically, I can pick and choose from all the different fields. These were the fields that you saw going across the top of the Excel spreadsheet. That's all been highlighted. Uh, so that means I have the option to pick from it. Now next, it's going to ask me a series of questions. First one, select what records you want to print. And then it gives you two options. I want to print all records or I want to select what records to print. I always take select. If you say all records, uh, what that means is when you print, it's going to print everything in there always. So if you would say 10 labels and you've got 500 records, you're going to print 10 labels for each of the 500. You want to be able to select which ones you want to print that day. So that's kind of key. Uh, there's reasons for this, but this is kind of key. You get the option. You can always go back and change it later if you find it once you become a little bit more experienced. Uh, question number two, specify how the label quantity information is defined. Uh, and it gives you three options. Print one label for each, uh, one field, and a table contains the label quantity information. What that means is you could actually assign a field where when your database you can plug how many labels of each that you want. Now that's important if you're linking to a server somewhere. Uh, in this case, once again, I always say I will enter the label quantity for each of the selected record. And if you remember right, when I started out with that first label, I could have told it to print two or a hundred or a thousand labels, uh, but I'll show you that again. So I'm going to say I will enter label quantity for each. Next, this question here, define how you want the selected database fields to be used on a label. And it, here's the options. I want a text object for each selected field or I will link the database field. Now I want to link it. I don't want I don't want the database, I don't want it to look up on all the fields and suck it into the label. I want to be able to define what fields are going to be on that label. So I will link the database fields to the objects myself later. And then I say finish. Okay, so step one, we did the database. Step, step two, we just linked the, um, <clears throat> the actual database to the label. Now what we want to do is we want to start selecting the information we want. Let's go to, uh, we know who the from is going to be, that never changes, but on the to, um, let's do that first. We're going to go over here, in fact I should have cur cursed it out here a little bit, and that's the problem with cameras. But I'm hoping you can see this. Over here now what we want to do is start assigning the fields. That was step number three that I was talking about. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, that was, yeah, step, we, we linked, step number three was a link to database. One was the setting up a database, two was setting up a label, three was linking the database, number four is to set up the fields. Now, we have the hard information in here, which is what you see here. This, basically, I'm saying it will never change. 
but I want there's changeable information and that's where we come over here first text I don't, I'm hoping you can see this I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say a new database field I'm going to come over here where I want it and now hopefully you can see this I'm going to zoom in again down here you don't have to worry about define. We've already done the define. We already said look up on the entire da database. What we're going to do is here it's asking us what field. Well, the first one is the customer that we're actually shipping to. So we want that to be the first one. Now we're going to hit next. Well, before we hit next, uh, this is important the length of characters. Basically, what's the longest length of characters for a customer you may have? And you have to be careful. You don't want to say a couple hundred because that'll go right off the label. Um, in this case we're going to say 22. Now I'm going to hit next and I'm assuming you can see that. It's going to ask me if I want a prefix or a suffix. This is where you can, if you were using somebody's name and you wanted to put Mr. or Mrs. or Ms. or um, a suffix, you know, let's say for instance it was a, a doctor, I guess. I'd, I've never seen anybody using this, but uh, cer certainly if you wanted to assign a prefix or a suffix, this is the place that you would do it for that particular field that you just picked. Um, and then I'm going to say finish. Now you'll see where in fact I have the customer's name. Let's do a couple more. I'm going to go back over here and I'm going to do these kind of quick here. Database field, I'm going to click on it. I'm going to come back over here, hopefully you can see it. And Now this is where I want address one. See where this come up 255? Well, I don't want 255, so I'm going to say once again let's say uh, 25 because addresses tend to be long sometimes so I'll say 25 I don't want a prefix or a suffix so I'm going to say finish okay so now I have the address one and then I'm going to come back over here again and I'm going to go for the text I'm going to say uh, new database field come back over here to show you click on that and I want address two now the reason why that's important is it might be something like 22 Windsor Court and address number two might contain suite 110 so that's kind of important to do that down here I'm gonna go with the 22 and I'm gonna say next no prefix suffix and I'm finished so I'm gonna move that over here and now let's go over here and let's do text again and this might be uh, another new field back over here again and I want the city, state, and zip code for that particular customer. Now that might be somewhat lengthy, so I'm going to leave this at 32. Hopefully you can see that. I'm going to hit next, no prefix suffix, I'm going to say finish. So I got that in there. Now the next thing I want to do is, I want to make this a little bit bigger. Right now if you can see over here, and I'll move up here to see if you can actually see it. The character size is 10, the rest of it is about 16 to 18, so I'm going to bump this up to 16 just to make it all bigger. In fact, let me highlight all of these. I don't know if you saw that or not. Uh, what I want to do is match up the character sizes so I can do some formatting here to rearrange this. Well, let me do, oop. I'm going to cancel out of that. Okay, so I got all these highlighted. I'm going to come over here, just so you see it, where it says 10, I'm going to select 16. And as you can see it, it changed over here. So that's kind of, uh, and I'm going to cursor out a little bit too, that's kind of important because uh, you want to match up the size and do your formatting and so forth. And you can start moving these around to make them fit better. So once you have your fields loaded into it, uh, then in fact you can go back and do a little bit of rearranging, uh, you know, sizing and stuff like that to do a little dress up on your label, and so forth. Okay, so now we have this information on here. Let's do a test and see if in fact it's actually working. We've already uh, selected the label. We already know what the printer's going to be, and we already have our print settings. And once again, if you watched the first video for the Zebra Design Pro software, you know how all that should be done, so I'm just going to pass right through that. And I'm going to go ahead and print. 
Now this is important, and I'm going to zoom in because this is where we go back to what I was talking about in the very beginning. It'll pop up a window, and it'll ask you to select records. Now let me move over here because I want to make sure you see this. So the first thing is, I'm going to go ahead and select the records I want to print. And keep in mind, we've only done four fields on this, but still it's applicable in this case here. And then once we select it, we can also say how many quantities we want. Like this one here, I'm going to say one. Now I'm going to click this, I'm going to say two. I'll click this one, I will want three. This is how many labels for each one of these I want printed. I mean, you can select 100 if you want, 500, 1,000, doesn't really matter at this point. So I'm going to say four. So what I did is I print these labels and give me one for this customer, two for this, three for this, and four for this. And I'm going to say, okay, I'm back over here. I'm going to say print. And if you can hear the printer, it's actually working. Oops, let me back out of this a little bit. Okay, now I want to show you now, on this case here, you'll see the uh, one customer here, ABC, it printed the label. And then, remember we said two for the next company, DEF, and then DEF. And we said three for the next company, which is uh, GHI. There's the second one. There's the third one. And then the uh, fourth company we picked, we said four. So that's the JKL that actually uh, print it. And that's the four labels. And that's the magic of the, the entire database using a database where you can make your changes to the database. You already have a predetermined format. You already have it linked to the database. Once you make the changes, all you have to do is go in there and select what you want and tell it how, how many to print. And I'm gonna do that again, just to kind of show you so that uh, everybody saw what we were talking about. I may not print the labels, but I, I want to zoom in just to make sure everybody sees, because in my mind, this is the heart and soul of why you might want to use a database. So when you say print, when you go up to the top and you say file print, this block pops up. And the first thing you do is it's going to say select records. Let me move over here so you can see that. And that's when you start to select the records here, where you can actually select which ones you want to print. Once again, you can have hundreds here. And then over here, you click on it and you can select the quantities you want. And I'm assuming that you can see that. But you can say what quantity of those labels that you want. Once you select your records, you assign how many quantities you want and so forth. It's just a matter of hitting, uh, coming down here and just say OK. And then you can walk away and let it print all the labels. You can come back later. Just let it drop into a, you know, into a box or something like that and then you can just uh, come back, go get a cup of coffee, come back and get all your labels and you're good to go. Now the information that you want to change, and this is what's important, although you see it on the screen here, and you can cursor over and look at it, when you want to change information, you have to go into the database and change it. So you'd actually go back, and that's how you would start out. You'd open up your Excel spreadsheet if you were doing it manually, and you would change all the information. Once again, it might be for each one of those customers, it might be a style or a size or a quantity or something like that, whatever the record may be. But make all your changes in there real quick because it'll probably take you about 10 minutes to rip through 100 of them and make the changes and so forth. Then you come back and all you have to do is select your individual um, uh, records that you want to print from your predetermined format and so forth. So hopefully, um, you know, hopefully you understand the whole theory behind that. I mean, it's that's the purpose of a database. Now. If you have something else to change in the database, uh, that uh, your IT people linked it to something else where the database is actually being um, uh, being changed and so forth on its own, then all your operator, you know, there's going to be a major dump in the morning, and then your operator is just going to come to this block and start selecting what's going to be printed. They may select it all, and they may say, "Give me ten of each," you know, that kind of stuff, and then they're off and running. So that just makes it a little bit easier and so forth. So let me back out of this. Let me uh, close this because I'm not going to print. And I want to go back to this just to kind of show you some other things. We're not going to do it. 
uh, but I wanted to show you. Uh, on this here, uh, this, you know, in all of these, we could uh, assign to the field. We already have it there, uh, the PO number and so forth. In fact, I'll do it just to show you. Uh, but the point I'm trying to make is you have flexibility with this. Oops. Yeah, I want text. Uh, database field. There you go. And I'm going to click here. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to look for PO. Hopefully you can see that. I'll cursor in just to make certain. So we're looking for the PO. Not, and then once again, that's in the database. I told you, you can load a lot. You can put a lot of fields in that database. It's not to say that you're going to print them all. Uh, and then next, so oh, we don't need PO. It's not going to be, it may only be 10, let's say at the most. Next, no prefix suffix, it's done. You got your PO sitting right there. We're gonna come up here. That's what I was telling you, talking about the uh, formatting for the size. We're gonna change the size from 10 to 16. Okay, that changed. And we're just gonna move it up here to position it. But that's how you basically use the label. Once you have this formatted and assigned, you're good to go. Now. You may have some other labels where, in fact, you won't have a PO or a department. Maybe you might have something else. Uh, you could set up a separate label format for that, link that to the same database, and pull that information out of that database. I mean, that's basically how simple and how quick it is. Uh, and and the uh, uh, where you can link a lot of different labels to one particular database, and you're you're pretty much good to go and so forth. So. I think that uh, that covers the five areas that uh, you know that we started out by saying that one I wanted to you know show you that you need to start with the database set it up number two you want to get set up a label which we did number three you want to link your database which we did number four you want to take and set up the individual fields from the database in the label format and do a save and then number five you want to get print the label so we covered all the areas Hopefully this answers a lot of the questions, um, and uh, once again, I apologize for taking so long, but uh, uh, we do do these, you know, at, um, at uh, our leisure and so forth. So, once again, thank you very much, John with GMIT.